The COVID vaccines are here. Know the facts. Get the shot. End the pandemic. The vaccines are proven safe and effective. The vaccine does not contain COVID. Nor will it give you COVID. Side effects are relatively minor and include arm pain, fatigue, and low-grade fever. The COVID-19 vaccine protects you and the ones you love. As healthcare workers, we're setting the example for our patients and community. This is your shot. Schedule your COVID-19 vaccine today. That was good, man. All right, joining us first tonight is head coach Chris Limonis. We will now begin with an opening statement from, uh, from the head coach and then go to questions. Please use the raised hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. When you are calling on for your first question, please state your name and affiliation first. Coach, if you would, please go ahead with a brief opening statement, then we'll open it up to questions. A great college baseball game <clears throat> against a great uh, team. Uh, we've gone four times against Texas this year, and each game has been a been a brawl. You got to tip your cap to those guys. I know they're disappointed, um, but it's just man, we've we've played some unbelievable games with those guys. I'm really happy for our kids. Um, <clears throat> I thought we got a great start from Will Bednar. Landon Sims did Landon Sims things, and then um, my my JUCO bandits put it together there in the ninth. Um, Braylon Skinner steals that huge base, and then. Man, so happy for Tanner Leggett. Tanner Leggett's been a role guy for us all year. Been in and out of the lineup. Um, never easy when you're that guy because you, you want to play. And then he gets the hit in the biggest moment, which means he's still invested. He's still working. Um, man, I'm just, I couldn't be happier for the kids. Yeah, our first question tonight is from Steve Robertson. Well, Chris, uh, you guys have kind of had a flair for the dramatic this year. I mean, I know you're not surprised to see it any other way tonight, but your ability to come back and walk things off, I mean, what does that say about the resolve of this team? And is that just kind of become your identity? Well, it, it has become our identity. I told the team last night in the rain delay, um, if you ever thought it was going to be easy for us, it's just, it's not, it's not our way. We just, we have, it seems like we have to be dramatic. We have to, you know, fight for it. And for us to get here, it was going to be a battle. And our team has been so resilient all year. I mean, it's, it's probably our number one quality. It's just grit, being able to stay locked in, focused, and, uh, Keep competing. Next question is from Robbie Falk. Yeah, Chris, Robbie Falk, Starboard Daily, Starboard Daily News and 247 Sports. I, I've heard you mention before just how, you know, it takes a whole team to have moments like that. How much is that uh, one of your weekly or daily teaching points? I mean, you have a guy that comes in there as a pinch runner, gets a second base, sets up a game-winning hit for – a guy that hasn't had a lot of plate appearances in the last month or so. <clears throat> What's that say about what your team is able to do in, in moments like that? The stage just doesn't seem too big for them. Well, you know, it's been really hard to manage everything because we have, man, we have really good players that aren't playing. And, um, you know, keeping those guys invested and, you know, even all week as we've been taking batting practice, Goat's been saying, and I've been seeing it, like Tanner's swing is good. Tanner's swing is good. And, uh, yes, it is because he showed it tonight. But, um you know, it's the culture, it's the chemistry, it's the being bought in, it's it's all our guys being locked in together. And so um, that's how you're able to do some things. We did it the other night against Virginia. We've done it all year long. And um, I just told him in the dugout, it's going to take all of us, all of us in step together to uh, keep winning here. And next we go to Nick Suss. Two quick ones for you, Chris. Uh, one was Raylan running his own, was that called? Two, what did you say to I, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. Can we mute here? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Braylon, did he run on his own, or was that called steal? Oh, I heard you now. Yeah. No, we um, when we put him in, I told him he just needed a good count to run on. So he was green, and um, I just you know we tried to make sure we got into a breaking ball count. Unfortunately, I think he ran on a one one four, and it was a fastball up and away. So probably. We didn't run on the, the best pitch or the best move, and he just outran the baseball. And then what did you say to Tanner before that uh, that at bat right there? I didn't say anything to him. I'm sure Goat said something to him, what pitch to look for. But, um, you know, he kind of just, you know, hit a ball hard is all we've been talking about and staying. Texas staff has so much power stuff. Um, you you got to just make sure you stay short and give your chance for contact because uh, it's a lot of punch-out stuff. And next we'll go to Aaron Fitt. Coach, uh, just curious what you're seeing from Landon right now. Obviously, he's pitched a lot this year. He's 
you know, had to pitch a few times in this event. Um, it seems like even without his best stuff, he's good enough to, to get people out. But what, what did you see from him tonight, and how do you kind of evaluate maybe his fatigue level? <clears throat> He was pretty good tonight. I mean, being extended, he knew before the game he came to us and said this will kind of be like the Super Regional, and we just agreed, yeah, that's fine. And, you know, we kind of read him daily. Um, I mean, he's had he's thrown a little bit harder during the year, but it's still, um, you know, mid-90s with a good slider. He's just such a competitive kid. He's just going to give you um, pitches and make pitches and three, two counts. He just – he just fights so much out there, and that's what you need this time of year. It's uh, being able to get some guys out there that can pitch in the moment and make pitches, and he's been that guy all year for us. Okay, next question is from John Sokoloff. Chris, um, you, you touched on him before and his resiliency and you guys mentioning the never getting too high or too low and, and how you rally at the end, but Tanner only had, I believe, three at-bats from May 26 until now heading into um, – into that at bat, I mean, how bought in has he been kind of this last month? How kind of hard can it be for a guy when he's not getting the at bats, obviously, that he wants? And how rewarding do you, is it for him to kind of deliver like that? Well, starting from the last question, it is you're so proud as a coach. And about a pitch earlier, right before the pitch came, Goat turned to me and he said, This may be the highlight of Tanner's career right here in terms of, you know, being able to get that big hit. And next thing you know, the ball's in the gap. Um, you know, yes, he just, you know, he just hadn't had the opportunity to play. We've kind of had to set lineup here through the postseason. So that's why, you know, over the last couple of weeks, we haven't played a lot of guys offensively. We have a little defensive switch. But um, <clears throat> being able to get Josh Hatcher some at-bats, who's been playing well, has led to uh, Tanner being able to get some, get some time in the lineup. And it just so happened. Uh, you know, his at bat, you know, or his time in the lineup came up tonight at the biggest moment. So, but he has been practicing, like I said earlier, his BPs have been really good lately, and that's a really good sign for him. Okay, next we go to Theo DeRosa. Coach, the last time you were here in the finals was 2013. How much have you been told about that team, and do you see any similarities to that team and this team this year? I don't know. I, I, you know, I know the players, and I was here in 13. We were in the same bracket. Um, I know it was a bunch of tough kids, and they're all playing. A lot of them are playing in the big leagues now. And uh, if you look up, you probably could say that's one of the, if not the best team here, because as far as they went, um, just it, it's a, uh, you know, I just we, we're our own team. You know, I mean, I, I'm sure Mississippi State teams have been resilient over time. I think that team had to fight through a super regional on the road and fight through a lot of things, and that's kind of what we've had to do. I mean, we've, uh, we've been fighting all year long. It's never been easy for us. Even with all the success we've had, it's, it's always a grind. Okay, next we'll go back to Steve Robertson. Well, Chris, um, I don't know if it's sunk in yet, but you're about to coach and play for a national championship. I know that these are the things that you, that you shoot for, but now that you've had a moment to kind of reflect on – this College World Series bracket, you're going to go play against somebody that knows you really, really well. Do you do you think that's a detriment, or are you excited about that? Yeah, we're excited. We're excited to, to just be playing, and uh, we played well against Vanderbilt early in the year at their place. Um, they're good, very good. That's why they're in the other bracket. Um, but once again, like I told our guys last night, I, you know, you, you know, for Mississippi State to win theirs, it's going to be a hat. You have to you're going to have to earn it. And uh, playing Vanderbilt and arguably one of the top programs, if not the top in college baseball over the last five years, they uh, I mean, we have to go against the best, and, and that's the way we want it. Okay, next we'll go back to Nick Suss. Chris, just curious, do you address your team at all about what happened with NC State today and just kind of what's your reaction to, to all of that? It, the only thing, like, we can't control that. Like, for us, <clears throat> it is conversation. The biggest part for us is, you know, and, and I hate it because, it, you know, we have such an unbelievable fan base is, you know, we have to take care of ourselves. You know, we want to make sure you, they're not allowed to sign autographs. They're not allowed to shake hands. They're not allowed to do some of the things you do in a normal year because we're protecting our group as a whole. But um, and our focus, and I, at least I tried to make it, our focus was about Texas. And um, now our focus is about Vanderbilt. I, it, it sucks. Uh, Elliot Avant's a good friend of mine. I have multiple coaches in my dugout who worked at NC State, who went to NC State. Um, man, it sucks. That's the only thing you can say about it. Um, man, our hearts are broken for them. And everybody, I'm sure everybody feels that way. Nobody wants to win a game out here because of that. It, it's, you know, it, everybody wants to win in between the lines. And, and I know, um, you know, for our kids, it's just about us jumping in there and playing Vanderbilt now. 
Okay, we're going to have time for two more questions. The first will be with David Murray. Coach, you've talked all year about be where your feet are, play in the moment. What is it about this team that allows them to, for good, bad, and different, never take one game into the next game? I, I think a lot of that, when people talk about of our experience, I think that's the biggest piece. And um, we have some great leaders on this team. Not just, we always talk about Tanner and Rowdy, but we got Spencer Price and Riley Self and Josh Hatcher and some of the older guys that have been around that, that understand, you know, it's it, you're just going to get punched in the nose in this league, and and you're going to punch somebody else in the nose, and it doesn't matter. It's just we've done it enough, and um, you know everything that we stress on is is about the next game, playing the next game. Uh, we'll enjoy this game, you know, here over the next 12 hours, but when we wake up tomorrow morning, um, we have to be ready to go. And um, you know, there's not a lot of time. I mean, uh, turnaround. We got to be able to be able to be ready to run out there and play good on Monday. And our last question for coaches with John Sokoloff. Chris, we've been mentioning how good Will did, Landon, you know, Tanner's walk-off. But what about you personally? What were kind of the emotions that you were feeling when that walk-off was hit? And where does that kind of rank in terms of some of your favorite uh, college baseball memories that you've had around the game? Well, until next week, that's my favorite. So it's uh, – I um, it just happened so fast. It happened so fast. You're sitting there in a tight game. And next thing you know, it's over, and uh, your kids are celebrating, and you're, like I said, you're you're hugging your coaches, and then you're just so proud and happy for your team. I mean, they work so hard. These kids, they sacrifice more than you can ever imagine to play at this level, to play on this stage, and um, to see them, you know, celebrate the way they did is is awesome. All right, coach. Thank you for your time. Thank y'all. And you guys have obviously been a great late inning team and you're a big part of that. But when you look at the offensive side of this, I mean, how much confidence do you have that your guys can always come from behind and win a ball game for you? Uh, I have all the world in, or all the confidence in the world that they're going to score runs uh, when it's needed. We've done that all year um, and we weren't going to stop now. So uh, I felt pretty confident right there in the seventh, eighth, ninth inning. You know, if we had to go into extras, I would have felt confident too. Our next question is from Theo DeRosa. Landon, you guys uh, going to the finals. I know that the team has never won a national championship. How much would that mean to you, and how much would that mean to this program to do that? Uh, it, I mean, it would mean everything. Um, you know, to us, uh, the program, to the school, to the city of Starkville, um, you know, I think it would mean the world. Um, and and we, I think we have a really good shot to do it right here. Okay, do we have any more questions for Landon? Again, please use the raise your hand function if you'd like to. We'll go back to Steve Robertson. A lot of discussion last night about maybe bringing you in and then, you know, that they don't, they bring in tonight. And number one, how did you feel yesterday? And, and, and number two, how do you feel right now after this one? Um, I was ready to go if the, if the situation presented itself yesterday. Um, you know, in a tie game, uh, I don't think Coach Lem wanted to pull the trigger. Uh, and I'm, you know, I, I think everybody in the program is perfectly fine with every decision he makes. Um, so I felt good yesterday, and uh, I feel really good right now, um, you know, from a mental and a physical standpoint. Um, so, yeah. Okay, we'll go to Nick Suss. Landon, in your head there, were you preparing to throw the 10th, or did you kind of expect the, the guys to walk it off there? Um, you know, I had to prepare a little bit. Uh, for for how many ever innings I was going to have to go right there. Uh, but I had a pretty good feeling we were going to score a run right there. And when Kellum got on base and then Braylon stole that base, I knew we were going to we were going to walk it off right there. Our next question is from David Murray. You speak about that, Landon. What, were, what was your reaction when you saw Tanner make contact? Did you follow the ball into the field or did you know it was in? Uh, right when it went off the bat, I think everybody in the dugout knew. Uh, that that it was it was game right there, um, you know he put a really good swing on it, probably the best swing of his life. I think he would say that. Uh, but um, you know, right off the bat, uh, I think everybody in the dugout knew. Okay, Landon, thank you for your time. Thanks, guys. Next up, we'll be joined by Tanner Leggett. Well, well Tanner, you, you grew up a Mississippi State guy, and you've always wanted to be this uniform. 
you just made the hit that's going to send Mississippi State to the College World Series final. So take us through the get bat and just tell us how you're feeling right now. Man, it's incredible. Um, I had a couple guys come up to me in the dugout um, and tell me that uh, I was going to get a chance to win it. Um, I had a chance for a big hit a couple nights ago, but uh, ground out to third. I uh, kept my head up, said my little prayer, and I knew when Bray got the bag stolen that it was meant to be. Um, if I got a pitch to hit, I was going to be short to it, and I did. Thank the Lord. Next, we'll go to David Murray. Tanner, take us through the at-bat. So I got a heater away on my first pitch. Um, it was a great pitch, great, great guy. Um, their pitching staff's tough. Um, but he hung one up, and I put a good swing on it. Um, wasn't a bad pitch, though. It was a good pitch. Uh, I was just locked in. I was where my feet were, and it paid off for us. Next, we'll move to Robbie Falk. Yeah, Tanner, Robbie Falk from Starwood Daily News and 247 Sports. Uh, you know, I was talking to Chris a little bit about this, but you guys are – he counts on you guys to be prepared for moments like this when your time comes. And – you know, you got a pinch runner on first base, the still second to get in position for you. Just how ready are you for moments like this? I mean, this isn't a normal, uh, you know, substitution. You're in – you have a chance to win and, and go to the College World Series finals. How prepared do you feel like you are and your team is for moments like this to step into it? Man, what an opportunity. Um, some people get nervous in those situations. I was, I was praying for that situation. Thank God that I was there. Thank Coach for putting me in the game. Um, I knew if I got a pitch, though, I was going to be short to it and just play my part um, every pitch, every out, all nine innings. Our next question is from Aaron Fitt. Aaron Fitt, D1 Baseball. Uh, Tanner, coach said that you thought you've been having some really good swings and batting practice lately. And um, I'm curious, you know, do you feel like that too? Do you feel like your BPs have been particularly strong? And is there anything in particular that you've, you've been doing lately that's, that's led to that? Not anything different. Um, just day in, day out, staying locked in, staying focused on uh, every game, every pitch, knowing that when I do get a chance, um, that I take advantage of it. And I mean, the postseason, yes, BP has been um, more serious, more locked in, but nothing too drastic. Our next question is from Elizabeth Merrill. Um, you're, you, did you grow up a Mississippi State fan? Uh, and just is that kind of the thing kids from Raymond, Mississippi do? And also, I just want to know what happened with your shirt after the game. <laughs> um, yes, I did. Um, I grew up in a small town in Mississippi, so I was always around Mississippi State, watching games, watching all sporting events. Um, when I got offered here, I knew that this is where I wanted to go and be a part of the baseball squad. Um, my shirt, Landon Sims, stole it, and I never saw it again. Our next question is from Nick Suss. Going off of that, man, what goes through your head when you see the swarm of teammates running at you in the infield? Everything. I mean, you just you black out. It's a great feeling knowing that we've worked so hard to get here. Um, just, I mean, what a moment. What a moment. When was your last walk-off? Shoot, high school baseball. Okay, we're going to have time for two more questions. The first one from John Sokoloff. Tanner, how, uh, how rewarding is it for you? You've only had like three appearances since the 26th, but, you know, uh, I mean, what was it like kind of keeping your head up high and just kind of waiting for your moment, and how rewarding was it to finally get uh, a couple of big shots and obviously have the biggest hit that the team's had this year? What was that whole process like, and how rewarding is it? Just stay in tune, um, knowing my part, knowing my role, day in, day out of practice, games, um, making – as most of every opportunity I can get. Um, not trying to do too much, putting good swings on the balls, just playing my part. Yeah, our final question for Tanner is going to be from Steve Robertson. So with a lot of maroon here uh, this weekend, and there'll be a bunch more come next week. But last night when you guys came out of the dugout after the rain delay, there was still a couple thousand Mississippi State fans here, and they got really excited. And uh, it seemed like some things were special kind of going on behind that dugout. What did that mean to you guys, all those people stayed through three-hour rain delay? And how much do you think maybe that mattered today, having your fans here? Oh, so much. That's what makes Mississippi State baseball um, is a fan base like absolutely no other. 
Um, when you have that many people rooting for you, yelling your name, just here in Omaha, I mean, it's like a home field advantage almost. It's incredible. Um, love every single one of them. For moments like that, that's what you pray for.